hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel subscribe like and don't forget to be part of the conversation by simply sharing your thoughts and views in the comment section down below now getting into a conversation steered by a palm color man who asserts that slavery was the root cause of the civil war this video presents a thought-provoking discourse on a topic that continues to elicit diverse opinions the claim is backed by a video from the head department of history at the u.s military academy west point adding an intriguing layer to the discussion now as we navigate through the comment section a myriad of perspectives unfolds igniting a dialogue on the complex factors that led to the civil war so join me in exploring the historical analysis questioning preconceptions and engaging in an open conversation can we collectively unravel the multifaceted origins of the civil war and how does this historical debate shape our understanding today your insights and knowledge are not only welcome but crucial to fostering a deeper understanding of this pivotal moment in american history for now check out this video i will be right back and when i do we found out more on this together i don't admire you for being wrong but there is something about the confidence and volume at which you are wrong that is somehow weirdly inspiring and look yes i should probably get off tiktok no no doubt no debate but i'm not going to get off tiktok because i said that slavery was the root cause of the civil war because that's correct. And if you don't want to believe me, you shouldn't believe me. But maybe you'll believe this gentleman who is clearly better situated to provide that information. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, professor and head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point for Prager University. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the southern states were willing to fight and to preserve a morally repugnant institution. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both sides. The secession documents of every southern state made clear, crystal clear, that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery, a phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to 0 in South Carolina, 166 to 7 in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no southern state was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the is not equal to the land. That slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. Yet despite the evidence, Many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights. But this raises an obvious question. The states' rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain and spread slavery? Moreover, states' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. In fact, Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights because it would not allow Delta planters to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. Many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together, not to end slavery. That was true at the outset of the war, but he did so with the clear knowledge that keeping the Union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. What was it that divided the country? It was slavery and only slavery. He continued, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. It will become all one thing or all the other. 
Lincoln's view never changed, and as the war progressed, the moral component, ending slavery, became more and more fixed in his mind. His Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 turned that into law. Slavery is the great shame of America's history. No one denies that. But it's to America's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from human bondage, and saved the United States of America. Welcome back, my viewers. We are still on the question was slavery the root cause of the civil war well according to my research while slavery was a significant and deeply rooted issue that contributed to the tensions between the northern and southern states in the united states it is important to note that the civil war had multiple complex causes economic and social differences states rights disputes and regional conflicts over issues like tariffs and trade also played pivotal roles in the lead up to the civil war however Slavery emerged as a central point of contention with debates over its expansion into new territories intensifying the sectional divide. Ultimately, the issue of slavery became a catalyst that exacerbated existing tensions and played a crucial role in sparking the conflict. Now, today, most professional historians agree with Stephens that slavery and the status of African Americans were at the heart of the crisis that plunged the, the U.S. into a civil war from 1861 to 1865. That is not to say that the average Confederate soldier fought to preserve slavery or that the North went to war to End slavery soldiers fight for many reasons notably to stay alive and support their comrades in arms and the north's goal in the beginning was preservation of the union not emancipation for the 200,000 african americans who ultimately served the u.s in the war emancipation was the primary aim now the roots of the crisis over slavery that gripped the nation in 1860 to 1861 go back to the nation's founding european settlers brought a system of slavery with them to the western hemisphere in the 1500s hundreds unable to find cheap labor from other sources palm color settlers increasingly turned to slaves imported from africa by the early 1700s in british north america slavery meant african slavery southern plantations using slave labor produced the great export crops tobacco rice forest products and indigo that made the american colonies profitable Many northern merchants made their fortunes either in the slave trade or by exporting the products of slave labor. African slavery was central to the development of British North America. Although slavery existed in all 13 colonies at the start of the American Revolution in 1775, a number of Americans, especially those of African descent, sensed the contradiction between the Declaration of Independence's ringing claim of human equality and the existence of slavery. Reacting to that contradiction, the northern states decided to phase out slavery following the revolution. The future of slavery in the South was debated and some held out the hope that it would eventually disappear there as well. Now, when the U.S. Constitution was written in 1785, however, the interests of slaveholders and those who profited from slavery could not be ignored. Although slaves could not vote, palm color Southerners argued that slave labor contributed greatly to the nation's wealth. The Constitution therefore gave representation in the Congress and the Electoral College for three over five of every slave, the three over five clause. The clause gave the South a role in the national government far greater than representation based on its free population alone would have gotten it. The Constitution also provided for a fugitive slave law and made 1807 the earliest year that Congress could act to end the importation of slaves from Africa. Now, there were many sectional differences in the 19th century America. Differences over slavery were the only ones that could not be settled by peaceful means. Much evidence from that time shows that the succession of seven deep south states was caused mostly by concerns over the future of slavery. When Mississippi succeeded, she published a declaration of the immediate causes which include and justify the succession 
Association of the State of Mississippi from the Federal Union. It stated, Our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery. Utter subjugation awaits us in the Union. If we should consent longer to the remain, it is not a matter of choice, but of necessity. We must either submit to degradation and to the loss of property worth four billions of money, the estimated total market value of slaves, or we must succeed from the union framed by our fathers to secure this as well as, as every other species of property. What do you, my viewers, have to say about this video? Do you agree or not? Kindly share your comments and views in the comment section down below as I get educated from your comments as well. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.